maybe we should do that. I'm happy to <laughs> happy to have the interview over there. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. <laughs> what is relax? <laughs> okay, yeah. I swim, I walk, I have a dog I play with, and that always makes me laugh. I get on my my hands and knees and play with my dog. Welcome back everyone to Walk and Talk on Onco Daily. My name is Tate Margarian. I'm your host as always. And today we have Dr. Lydia Shapira as our guest. Dr. Shapira, will you introduce yourself, please? It's my pleasure. It's lovely to be in Chicago with all of you. I'm Lydia Shapira, professor of medicine at Stanford University, where I also direct a program in cancer survivorship. Okay, perfect. Dr. Shapira, we're gonna take a walk sure. and have a little chat. Let's do it. Yeah, let's get started. So, I know you travel a lot, but I'm wondering if you have a dream destination. Oh, my dream destination is to be in a beach somewhere in the Pacific. Ah, uh, sounds so <laughs> nice. Wouldn't be nice right now, right? Would be great. <laughs> Would be great after all of the frenetic energy of uh, the ASCO meeting yeah, in Chicago. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should do that. I'm happy to <laughs> happy to have the interview over there. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Okay. Uh, second question is, do you have any skills uh, that you have learned that people might be, or any talents or hobbies that people might be surprised to know that you have them? Uh, Some secret? Yeah, well, I think that um, my, um, my real vocation is probably to be a philosopher, to ask the questions of, you know, like the why, right? Really? To everything. So maybe my uh the things that i love to do are to think very deeply about questions or and i love to write so yes so my uh my the times when i feel happiest is when i'm sort of when i'm have a screen and time to think and and Typing. play with words oh my yes. and what do you write well i'm writing some nonfiction these days mm -hmm. uh so sort of uh trying to put stories and thoughts together based on my real experiences in medicine i think once you get to be my age you also start to think about you know how you see the world and what it is that you've learned that maybe could help other people oh, wow. so i'm trying to put all of that together in writing which has been a real adventure <laughs> well are you uh, thinking of publishing anything I am thinking. Really? I am thinking now whether or not that thought it uh -huh. actually happens or not, but I am thinking. Yes. If you do publish anything, do let me know. Please. Sure. I need a copy. Sure. Be happy, to, be happy to do that. Thank you. So, another question. You are a very busy woman. I know that. Yes, I am. How do you relax? Yes. So, um, what is relax? <laughs> Okay, yeah. So I try to compose my days, compose my weeks, so that there is downtime. Mm. Um, I exercise, I swim, I walk, I have a dog I play with, and that always makes me laugh. I get on my, my hands and knees and play with my dog. Um, I love movies. Uh -huh. Movies take me out of my present and, you know, take me into a fantasy or fiction world that is incredible incredibly helpful. Uh, so those are two ways I like to read, I like to talk with friends, I like to travel, but mostly I think relax for me is, you know, putting all of my energy into doing something different. Wow. So walking, swimming, doing something fun. Sounds like busy relaxation. Though. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's may maybe, maybe not enough time for contemplation, but <laughs> If I'm lucky and I'm healthy, there'll be a time in my life later on where maybe I'll have more time for that. You know, I, I always put away things, for instance, that I don't have time for now. Uh -huh. And I have closets full of things that I'm going to deal with later because I think they're interesting, but I don't have the time right now. I do the same, Excellent. actually. Yes. I do wish the day comes that we get to do all the stuff. Yeah, me too. And I, it's like the books that pile up on my same. nightstand. Same. Oh, my God. Yes. You see? You know, you need a little poetry, you need a little story, <laughs> yes. you need a little nonfiction, you know, and so something it's the balance. Something mysterious, something yes. out of all. Oh, yeah. And always a little poetry. Yes, absolutely. Must have. Must have. Okay, let's get going then. Um, what are you most proud of? You do lots of stuff. 
Yeah. But what's something that you are most proud of, you would say? You know, it's interesting you asked me that question. Back in um, the year 2017, I did an interview with my daughter. You did? Yes. And she asked me that question. Really? Uh, yes. So I've had a lot of time to think about that. And I think that my answer is very similar to what I gave her. I'm most proud of, I think, of two things. One is where I, as a doctor, was able to help somebody in a difficult time. Those moments in my life, uh -huh. I'm very proud of. And the other is as a teacher, as a parent, when I see that some of the things that I've learned and I've tried to teach other people all of a sudden click with them. Aww. Those are the moments that make me feel really, really good. That's so nice. Yeah. Oh, that's actually quite inspiring. Yeah. So my, maybe someone will get inspiration for that. And be like, I hope so. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a doctor. Yes, I hope so. Yeah, I do I hope so. so too. I think as a as a doctor and as a teacher of of doctors, mm -hmm. you know, you touch a lot of lives. Absolutely. And um, as a teacher, sometimes you can impact how maybe a younger colleague or a student will then approach their own professional life and That's you can true. think about all the lives they're going to touch so the impact continues wow. to grow you know beyond the people that you actually come in community with and I think that's that's kind of an, a, a very lovely thought that gets me up in the morning. That's good. That's very gently put. But yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Okay, then. Another question is, what's the most challenging thing that you've ever done? Um, what is the most challenging thing? I think sometimes the things that I find very challenging is when I'm pretty sure that I can think of a better way to do things and mm -hmm. the people I need to help me accomplish that somehow don't get it. Yeah, are not on I the same page. So I think <laughs> that the, the challenging part is when I feel that we could may be making progress faster, we could be making something easier for mm -hmm. another person, we could make our treatments more accessible to people who don't have them. And I kind of see a way, but there are hurdles or obstacles that don't yeah. allow me to do it. Those are the moments when I feel the challenge is big. But I do feel like you do a great job of overcoming those challenges. Well, that's the that's the effort that yeah, I put into, well. you know. Uh, <laughs> but you asked me what's difficult. What's difficult, I think, is that interface with a challenge. And then what happens is, you know, do I have the energy? Do I have the vision, the team, the you know, resources. The, the resources to find a way of overcoming them. And sometimes I do, but mm -hmm. not always. I feel like you do a wonderful job and a lot of lots of other people will agree with me on that. Thank you, very kind. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview for today. And this was it for today's Walk and Talk, <laughs> everyone. Thank you Bye. for watching. Thank Stay you. Stay tuned for further Walk and Talks. See ya. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay update.